What? Actually, it's supposed to be about the Kashmir B virus and uh, uh, European forward. By the way, I had a three presentation, but because I got a lot to do, two of them, I ask a favor if I can do about the American forward is my uh, favor uh, presentations. Uh, after lunch, I actually I spend uh, almost all time to uh, to get the video uh, being displayed or not. We couldn't succeed to get the to find a way to do it. Um, that video actually was six minutes. It was showing uh, the colony with so much infection of AFP. Uh, we had a video before treatment, during treatment, and after treatment. The reason I take that video because uh, uh, American forward disease, actually, uh, I had a solution for treatment more than 20 years, but I know it's a difficult belief for most scientists, especially when we talk about, uh, when we talk, yeah, this was about the video six minutes, I don't have them now. Um, basically, this presentation is how we can use the AFP colony and populations for royal jelly production, for queen production, or any other purpose of use. But the main thing is, uh, beside using for uh, queen productions or jelly productions, uh, it really is a treatment for AFP or not, which is, that's the most topic of the information. Well, we know AFP, American forward, is caused by bacteria, gram positive penivacillus larva, and uh, basically uh, no antibiotics can work on a spore, uh, on a spore, and it can survive for so many years. Is uh, any any part of bee equipment it can affect uh, hives again, and uh, but here basically we have a methodology of uh, first of all how to use the uh, AFP hives for queen productions and to get made a queen out of it. When the brood production is over, we can use the hive as a new hives without doing any uh, burning hives, frames, equipment, or any boxes, or any radiation is not necessary, except if you want to make it a little easier work, we can do for on some equipment. Basically, um, yeah, the paradox, it was developed. This paradox is called Caspian solution. The, it's a combination of the royal jelly and the pheromone. The reason uh, this combination of the products work is uh, we know uh, we can have so much spore in, in pollen, in honey, in, the, in any part of the bee equipment. The only where the penibacillus larva will germinate to bacteria stage and get active and grow is when we have a larva, when brood production happens. Basically, when bees consuming pollen has an AFP, basically they're consuming a spore, they're consuming uh, in honey, pollens, part of it they get defecate, part of it they get fed to the larva. But the main problem, whatever we do, when they do, basically, even we do lab tests uh, when in agar system, American forward has to germinate to use the antibiotics to see is it resistant or not. It's called antibiogram test. The same formula with the Caspian solution, it works the same as agar system in the lab. But the difference is with using in the highs, because well, what happens when the spore germinate with the 4% of only antibiotics is required, with the <coughs> Less than 10% of the liquid has been recommended so far. It can be used almost a one liters for temperate population to cure the American farm roadhouse. In Canada, uh, basically, the way I made my money, the way I made operate my bee business by buying over 15,000 box and frame full of AFP from North Alberta farm called uh, Babe Honey Farms. Used to keep them over there. Basically, uh, now I'll show you the show you the basic. Like a frame like these, symptoms of infections, we don't have to burn them. We can reuse them with the radiations. I had that video, too bad I don't have that video, because I know hard to believe when it comes to American farm bird disease controls, doesn't matter one cells or all frame of infections, it can kill the hive. It can be dangerous uh, for the hives even by one cells. But the, the, but the issue is here. Even by burning the hives, still you have a disease epidemics, it can back again. Especially when a hive has a highly infection, infections, drawn bees leaves and go to other hives. Disease epidemics before we identify the hives events. And uh, really, burning the hives is not a solution for it. But now, uh, that's uh, basically a little explanation how we, since 1986, uh, we went using these products. Uh, and the result, we didn't get it. Basically, now here, the protein consumption is the key to germinate the spore to bacterial stage. Uh, in many diseases, it's the same. But uh, when early springs, when early springs, bees start 
broodings basically by consuming pollen either from natural flow or consuming so much honey their body fat then goes over 13 percent automatically jelly production start they feed the jelly to the queens queen is starting laying eggs then that pheromone from larva stimulate the bees to consume more pollen which is at the same time uh, if there's any penny bacillus larva involved any uh, scale involved in the combs they can germinate and they can create uh, in basically disease can grow but with this method actually we will see some of the picture how much jelly get involved in the larva in the combs uh, each larva will get at least 50 times more jelly than normal conditions basically germination of the spore happening at least 50 times more meaning we have a much more chance of defecation of the spore when bees consuming the part products meaning 50% uh, of uh, spore will be present to the larva and then uh, whole frames almost getting over 99 percent of the frames getting full of the brood and it helping to germinate and <coughs> during the hives with such a low level of antibiotics but is a uh, basically two different step or to cure the hives now when that you see that worker jelly if anyone i'm sure most of you have experience with bees this is not normal to see this much jelly for the larva a huge level of larva getting fed and these bees hatching last in 20 days 19 days 18 and a half a days and they don't survive two months in working time they survive over two three months <coughs> over three months almost see next more we have a loss of jelly for the larva yeah. loss of jelly that production of the jelly uh, helping uh, the basically colony to germinate all the spores <coughs> And those jelly was produced with uh, only a three, four frame population. It wasn't a huge hive to produce that much, that much, that much worker jelly. But now we have a two different uh, way of treating American farmers. If it's a colony has an active AFP, like in the springs or summer, anytime we see the hives, the colony are active. Always we have to cut the brood circulations because. The only one or two days old larva, sometimes there's so much spore present, three days old larva, it can be infected with the penibacillus larva. Uh, if you want to feed any products, doesn't matter antibiotics or solution, whatever you want to do, if you have a keep new all larva coming one or two days, you keep receiving the disease in the systems. The best thing to do is first we have to take the queen out of the colonies to make basically after five days we don't have any one or two days old larva. To become infected. All infection we have is in the larva is older age and the pupa basically. In uh, 21 days but first five days we recommend one or two days of the feeding the paradox and then for 21 days when all the population hatch we have the virgin queen or fresh mated queens and most of the pupa hatch. Basically to advantage of doing that by seeing one sales of AFP in 20 frame population and 10 frame cap brood we don't kill 30 40 thousand bees with 30,000 pupa, which is because one cells of AFP. And that all those bees can hatch. Eventually, if beekeeper wants to get rid of the frame with a scale or irradiate, they can do it. But the main thing is, all those population can be used for so many things, but um, I wish again about, about that video involved to see all those. But I will have that video in months from now in YouTube or, and, or my Caspian Apiaries or Caspian Solution, if you search it, you will see all those videos, how infected frame getting used. Basically, here is a showing how that mechanism or system works uh, in active hives. But if you have a hive in non-active, basically, colonies, if colonies are, uh, say, in winter, we don't have any brood productions, or in fall or end of the season, we don't have any brood production, diseases are not active. But, uh, what we have is a spore. Uh, basically, in September, in many places in recommended using antibiotics either powder forms or liquid forms in September. But we know the antibiotics doesn't work on a spore and in end of the season we have maximum two or one percent of the larva they are less than two days old. Is it really is it useless or really it doesn't get any answer we don't get to any answer for that. But uh, how we prevent the problem early season when we are starting the beekeeping. Uh, by early season, diseases are not active yet. It's not a bees pathogen, it's a larva pathogen. All we have to do, we can pick the uh, frames, has the symptoms, we take them out. The box, um, radiation is the best, best for the box. If it's not, 
we can torch them, but torching uh, is not a proper system. But we don't have to irradiate the frames, irradiate the honey, irradiate the pollens. That, those all spore can stay in it for bees to consume it and feed them to the larva and part of it can be defecated. But uh, the treatment basically with that, at least we don't have to take the queen separate and wouldn't be too much work. And that will be a best prevention to not using any, uh, uh, with the first two feedings when you use, we don't have to reusing any antibiotics till end of the season uh, for the treatments. Now, we see some number here. In year 2000, when I came to Canada, basically it was the year 99, I go to, been to Canada for Epimondia uh, in Canada. I met the beekeeper with uh, 42 hives, all was infected with American fallbrood. By law, they're supposed to burn all the hives, but all been treated. That basically attracted apiculturist in Paul Ramesander in um, British Columbia. We've been, I've been involved with them two years at the government program to see that treatment goes, uh, how that treatment world works. Basically, the catchment solution was works. And in year 2001, as uh, other operations, uh, was 175. But year 2002, the two beekeeper from Alberta, they had over 37% um, losses. When you have a 37% loss, really, meaning other 63% is they have the huge amount of uh, uh, AFP symptoms. They've been treated, uh, and uh, the year after, I remember 5,000 hives from that operations, and uh, his brothers, other beekeepers in South Alberta, other 5,000, we find only max, only five hives with the symptoms, very low number of the symptoms in the hives. I mean, uh, but still, these are the number from past, still we're doing lots of works on it, and every time, I mean, I making this treatment, I really enjoy that too. But American forward hives, because the bees, they don't use too much jelly for the larva, because some of the, and also fresh bees when they hatch, uh, some of them they get destroyed on during pupa stage, but the queen producing same amount of pheromone all the time is because of the she laying eggs. The protein consumption is a more than colony needed. That's why AFB hives, it can be very good for royal jelly productions, worker jelly production, <coughs> which is work, worker jelly production uh, is a, my presentation about the ulcers treatment in Epimondia. is a very good topic about the using half a chromosome for graftings to produce new called, called N chromosome royal, royal jelly, which is not an acidic and bad test. But when we using all the times the colony for AFP treatment, always uh, giving us good feeling when you see we don't have to burn the eyes, and we see the colony, how fast they're recovering. Basically, um, here basically, when we're using these products, because we feeding so much pheromone to the larva, or to the bees, it is kind of giving message to the bees, if there's so much larva exists, they have to consume lots of pollen. We, just to make that clear, if you have five frames or six frames of pollen in 10 frame populations, and it's a winter, no brood, bees will not consume that pollen. But we know the jelly production, for any reason we want to use, it depends on pheromones is released by queen or by the larvas. But when that over limit of jelly production happens, they feed so much extra jelly to the larva, that larva getting capped in eight and a half days to ten, nine days, and they hatch 19 days. That's only first generation that can happen for more generation too. And that will actually, it will a little bit prevent for the varomite because in 19 days, only one male hatch, and the second hatch of the varomite uh, can be prevented. But that is not a basically uh, prevention for varomite because in drum productions, they can keep increasing. And then basically, uh, this topic. The material basically we use for these works uh, is a, Basically, for the Casper solution is the paradox uh, to, uh, for using it. To be, it's a 30 gram dry Casper solution. It used to be liquid, just to be manufactured, to be made in dry forms. Uh, eight liters mix of syrup, six liters of, six uh, grams of, uh, 60 gram pollen, 60 gram honey. That uh, with 1.2 liters of the warm waters. But if it's a temperate population, and the 4% of the antibiotics being required, we use. But also, we find uh, 
uh, wild bacteria virus, which is not registered in uh, uh, industry to buy it. And one of the things we are afraid to introduce that because it can be copied very easy. Uh, we don't have.